Shalom, I'm giving all praise to you. Shalom, to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom, to you all. Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video. I don't, I don't know how long I'm going to make it. This is only just I'm just finished washing clothes. I'm going to finish 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 washing clothes. I'm going to this was the video. I was watching part of it last night. I was getting sleepy, which is, you can see, put it by GMS South Carolina. 08, the Gospel of Nicodemus is a pseudo, su, su, su de paragrapha. Hell is a fable. So I'm going to entitle this video, The Gospel of Nicodemus is BS, and anybody that's teaching that there's an actual hell, how the Most High is not dealing with you at all, period. You should get up and run from them people, not walk away, run away. You have uh, IUIC, they've been teaching it. So the Mo Yahweh Bashem is not, Yahweh Bashem El Shai is not dealing with them, period. Yeah, but they read out the scriptures. Yeah, but Esau reads out the scriptures too. So I guess the most size with Esau, huh? So, yeah, this is this book is, and one of the the men in uh, my camp had gave me this book, and I couldn't, I read it, I couldn't get into it, and then he said, um, it's on, uh, you can hear it online. I listened to it. I said it wasn't, my spirit wasn't hitting it at all. I said I ain't reading this book. I said this is bullshit, you know. And um, so in this video. Um, the elder put goes into got questions, which if you got questions, you ask. I came on the site before. It's pretty much you go into Google, you put in a word, give you information. So this is this site is similar to, similar to Google, where you have a question, they give you uh, you know give you the information on a lot of different subjects. So. I'm just going to let you listen. I'm not going to... Let's see where the spirit takes me. Um, but there's a, a spirit of... Uh, how can I say? Um, a spirit of deception. A spirit of... You got so many Israelite groups out there doing what they... They got their own take on the thing. And they all... All these different groups that, that are not a part of, part of One West... They got their, you know, their 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 model from one west. The, you know, the twelve tribe sign, the you know, the fringes on the garment. You know, they call on the name Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which shows you that the the truth came out of one west. So I'm just gonna let you. You can watch. The, I would. I I say watch this whole video. I got up to this point. So I'm listening right about here. Let me bring it back a little bit more. And so listen up. Absolutely no reason is that second or third, third paragraph. There's absolutely no reason to think that the gospel of Nicodemus is a genuine gospel. Oh yeah, it's not. The, the book of Dip Nicodemus, some eater might put together, you know, to make money too. And that's, that's another stumbling block. Book, the book of Nicodemus, the gospel of Nicodemus, is not, is not approved of the Most High. Nicodemus didn't write this book. But, you know, Jake, they like something new, you know? The book doesn't date to before the 4th century, at least 300 years after Yahweh Shah died and rose again. There are no references to the gospel of Nicodemus by any major early Christian writers, right? Which would be Israelite writers. So this is the, the gospel of Nicodemus is pretty much something new. Somebody could have put this together, together a year ago. I mean, I'm not going to go all into the history of it. I don't have to. I know the spirit works with me. My, I have um, eye salve so I can see through things. See, you got a lot of these guys that fall off. Because they think they got the their, their eyes are open and your eyes are not open.
such as Irenaeus or Eusebius. Further, the book claims to record a number of events such as the conversion of Pilate <laughs> to Christianity that are not the corroborated. The conversion of Pilate to Christianity. Now, I said this before. We don't know if Pilate was an Edomite or he was a Jake that had a high position. But he did pardon. Uh, he said, I see no fault in the man. Now, that's something that Edom Edomites wouldn't really say. Some, that's something that Jake would, would say. I had this one Jake judge. And um, he knew about the Israel. There was this old lady that had they gave me a ticket because she said this old black bitch that's dead and gone. And uh, she said that I hit her. So she told the cop. It was a news crew that was out there. I forget the guy's name. He he was a uh, Channel Nine News in uh, New York. He's a famous. I forget the guy's name. But he threw the camera in my face and he wanted to have an interview with me and I kind of cursed him out. And he said, I'm going to make you look bad. He said, I'm going to make you look bad on, uh, you know, my, my show. And I said, yeah, of course, because you're the damn devil. Something to that effect. This was on 86th Street. Apostle Gabar was there, I believe. Apostle recall we were speaking. And um, they can tell you if they were there. So he uh, got this old, old black bitch, and she didn't even come next to me. She just kicked, called the cops and pointed me out and said, this guy punched me in my face. <laughs> First of all, if I punch you in the face, you're going to be dead. There's no marking on us, and the stupid ass, and most cops are stupid any fucking way. They're idiots. Um, so he gives me a, a, de a dat, a desk apparent, a parent's ticket. And I was in court for something else anyway, so it was the same court. So the lawyer that I had, I explained it to the lawyer, Edomite lawyer. She was real nice to me. She was very, very nice, very good lawyer. And she was super nice. And I remember her to this day, you know. She looked like an Edomite. She heavy, heavy set, you know, kind of fat. But she was, uh, you know, she fought for me, man. Hey, them lawyers... We, we were locked up. We had the damn TV lawyers, man. And they were, like, happy to represent Israel. They said, we all know that they're the Israelites. Y'all all know, know about the Israelites, so we represent, we going to represent them. They was like, ha they were like, it's like, it's like, uh, I'll get back into my thing. It's like Gotti. If you're in a, law a lawyer and you representing Gotti, you 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 happy to do that because you're then you become a celebrity. I look at look at the dream team. Right? Nobody knew about uh, uh what's this guy? Um uh, damn. The dream team. What's the main the Jake? I can't even think of his name, man. My brain is gone, my brain is fried. Uh damn, I can't even Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran, the dream uh F. Lee Bailey. Uh you had um Kardashian, Robert Kardashian, which his daughters are the Kardashians, and they got their fame through their father because he was on a dream team. And who, who else was on there? But anyway, nobody knew about, nobody knew about uh, uh, this guy, uh, you know, this this guy, um, these the dream team, so to speak. So they got their, their fame, you know? Johnny Cochran, nobody knew about Johnny Cochran. He became famous after that case. So these lawyers was like, oh, we get to represent the Israelites? So I remember that, man. But anyway, in that same court, the the Jake woman, they must have gave us some money. The Jake, she actually came to court, and I had a Jake, an older and gentleman judge, and he saw right through it, man. And when he heard I was, he said, "You guys, are, he said, oh, he said, you guys are the Israelites. You guys, oh yeah, what? You know, he was like a kid in a can, a kid in a candy store. He said, you, 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 you're, a, you're actually an Israelite." You know, his face lit up, and he threw the case out, you know? And that bitch right there is burning in hell, which we know that there's no such thing as hell. But she's in the spiritual realm. She's going she gonna to see me in the kingdom, and she's going to put her head down, pursuant to uh, Daniel chapter 12. But anyway, let me get back into it. Let me come back into this here. Uh, let me just let you listen. I kind of went off on the rant. In the Just Bible. another war story. Bible. So this, 
this crazy book says that Pilate converted. Okay. <laughs> he said this crazy book is a crazy book. That's why when the brother, the young elder gave it to me, I couldn't. Uh, what matter of fact, when we were in the car, I said, I asked Gabar, I said, Gabar, could you read? He said, I, I can't get into this. And then the car, yeah, I can't get it. You know, uh, Ryan, I can't get into it. Then I'm looking, I said, I can't get into this. This is bullshit. And then I, and then and then the brother, the elder, told me, uh, you can you can hear it on, uh, on the YouTube. So I put it on you. I heard. I said, no, no. I said, this is this is bullshit. I said, I'm, I'm this is bullshit right here. But now he mentioned that in the book Pilate converted. Like I said, Pilate, going back to the judge that was all, you know, oh, you're an Israelite. He was all, you know. So I guess Pilate was the same way because he was fascinated. And remember, Yahweh Shai had that fame already. When they, when they uh, crucified him and they, when they judged him, he was already famous. Everybody was talking about, like, like John, everybody was talking about John. And then everybody was talking about Yahweh Shai. And um, so Pilate heard him. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, this is this is the famous uh, Yahweh Shai, you know. Now, like I said, you, I can't prove it, but I believe he was a Jake that had a high position. Remember, Jake's had high positions, positions uh, back on that during that time. And ultimately, Jake took over the um, emperorship, if that's a word. The, now you got you got uh the bishop you got Bishop Nathaniel and stop stop you sounding you sounding you sounding fucking uneducated man you're not well read you're not studious yeah uh September one ninety three A.D. said Tibius Severus gave the first Jake no dumbass it was Nerva the first Jake that sat on um sat on the on the throne so to speak of the emperors was was a jake and uh it was 96 a.d that's when we started ruling all right that's why when you read uh uh second ezra's chapter 11 and second ezra's chapter chapter 12 it's only referring to the 12 caesars from well you had caesar which was his name julius you had julius all the way up to uh, 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 not Vespasian. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Domitian, which is the younger brother of uh, Titus. There were twelve of them. So starting with Julius, and now you have. Um, well, I'm not going to go into that. That's a different. That goes into a different subject. But anyway, so that's where it stops. It stops at the uh, the twelve Caesar, and then everything is reset, and then you got new Caesars. So the first the, the, the first Caesar after the twelve, let's say the thirteenth Caesar was a Jake, Nerva. Then you had um, you had uh, what's this guy? They were they were he was the first of the five good Caesars because they they were doing right by the people. You had um. Commodus uh, father, which was Marcus Aurelius, you had uh, Hadrian, you had a couple others. If you go, if you go to the Caesars, you can get all their names. If you go to five, the five good Caesars, and I did this before, they were all Jakes. Matter of fact, let me go to this. Let me go to that. Let me go to that right quick. The names of the five good Caesars. The five good emperors. According were, to study.com, the five good emperors were Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antoninus Pius, and Marcus Aurelius. They created a time of prosperity for the Roman Empire. Because they, they were Jake. When Jake came into office, they made they made Rome, you know, they they had, they got Rome popping. Now, if you notice right here, right. You see, you see that they got the beards, right? They got the beards, but they were actually Jake. If they want to be honest, Esau, they would be Jake, but they got the beards. The um, all the other Caesars during the time when Esau was ruling, 
I believe the only one that had a beard was uh, uh was um, Nero, which that's Trump. So when he came back as Trump, he has no beard. But back then he had a what, what you call a chin beard. But the rest, none of them had a beard, from my understanding. If you check out their bust, but as you can see, Hadrian had a beard. Antonius Pius had a beard. Marcus Aurelius had a beard. The get the man that played Marcus Aurelius in um. The, uh, the movie The Gladiator, which is played by, uh, was that Harris? Richard Harris, which I believe he's a Jake. Looked like an Edomite. Um, so that's a whole, this that goes into a whole different, you know, subject. They created a time of prosperity for the Roman Empire. And this spanned from Nerva 90, 96 AD to Marcus Aurelius, which was like 180, 181 AD. So we're talking, we're talking about a hundred years of prosperity for the Roman Empire. And uh, you had a, a split between the West, West and the East. The West was Esau. They went down and, and the East kept going, kept, kept driving. Then as history goes on, you had Byzantine Empire and so forth. That's a little history right there. Let me come on back over here. So I'm going to let you listen to some more. Damn. There is no mention of men named Lucius and Corinthians in the Bible, or Corinthians in the Bible. The Gospel of Nicodemus appears to have been written long before the Bible was completed, long after, excuse me, let me read that again. The Gospel of Nicodemus appears to have been written long after the Bible was written, too late to have even been written by Nicodemus, Pilate, or any other purported author. That said, the Gospel of Nicodemus was a well-known text in the Middle Ages. Medieval ideas such as the harrowing of hell, the teaching that between the crucifixion and the resurrection, Yahweh Shah went to hell, broke down his gates, and delivered the righteous from captivity are largely drawn from the Gospel of Nicodemus. Listen, so while the book may be interesting, may be an interesting read for cultural and academic reasons, there is no reason to take it seriously as theology or history. The Gospel of Nicodemus is pseudopigraphal and not a lost book of the Bible. And you go to this word pseudopigraphal or pseudopigraphal. What are pseudopigraphal? Just some real quick here. It says the pseudopigraphal are the books that attempt to imitate scripture but are, but that are were written under false names. Did you hear that? And we've been over this before. Pseudo, pseudo means anti, like the antichrist is also known as the pseudo Christ. Give me a second. Okay, let's listen. Oh, all right, when dealing with some of those other books, but let's go into it again. The pseudopigrapher or pseudopigrapher are the books that attempt to imitate scripture but that are that were written under false names. The term pseudopigrapher or pseudopigrapher comes from the Greek pseudo meaning false and epigraphene meaning to inscribe, thus to write falsely. All right, so the book literally means to write falsely or false book fake book the pseudo pseudo books were written anywhere from 200 bc to 8300 they are spurious works written by unknown authors who attempted to gain a readership by tacking on the name of a famous biblical character and when you look into the word spurious it's also fake or false let's go to it search This is the word spurious. Spurious. 
furious. It says not being what it purports to be, false or fake. Similar words, bogus, fake, specious, false, factitious, counterfeit. See that? So spurious is counterfeit. And that's what this this uh gospel of Nicodemus like the book of Yasha, the book of Enoch, all these other books. And then you might say, Well, wait a minute, the book of Yasha is in the scriptures. Yeah, but the book of Yasha that's out there now is some something that some eater might put together and uh just made shit up and you simple ass Jakes just follow it, man. Like G O C C they they G O C C is so far gone, we don't even talk nobody talk they nobody talks about them. I mean they're gone, man. You know? they that's another group that teaches about hell. And this is a this is a demon. This is a heavy demon, that hell demon. You know, these guys pushing this hell stuff. And we went if you go if you if you if you were a scholar, if you if you looked at things like a, a way a scholar would, you would you would see that you would see how many times the word hell is written in the Old Testament, how many times is the word hell written in the New Testament or hell fire. And you you go to each and every one of them words, you come to the conclusion that there's no such thing as hell, that hell is pretty much, it's, it's a grave. And it could be in a condition. Uh, Jonah was in the, in, the, in the fish. It says the fish, some people say it's Leviathans, other people say it's, it's a well because a well is a fish. No, it's a mammal. No, it's a fish. It's in water. The reason why it's called a a, a, a well because it wells. It's a well, the, the well is the criers. So it doesn't say. Uh, it doesn't say whether it was Leviathan or not. So you can only speculate as to what swallowed him. Was a gigantic, whatever it was. But it, but the scriptures say it was it was a fish. And I believe the New Testament says a well, which a well a well is a fish. Nicodemus is a counterfeit book. Now it goes on. It says there are spurious works written by unknown authors who attempted to gain a readership by tacking on the name of a famous biblical character. Obviously, a book called the Testament of Abraham has a better chance of being read than a counterfeit testament of an unknown author. Right. And that's why they do that. You see. So I'm gonna leave off from here. And if they, if some, if they, somebody come up with the book, the 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 hidden writings of Abraham, you you Negroes will flock and get that book, and you'll start teaching them that book. Then you'll say, "Oh, we over the one West guys, so we got this new book." A lot of confusion out there, man. A lot of stumbling blocks out there. And the Most High put these stumbling blocks out there. You know, like the hell doctrine, the MOTB is, uh, and the MOTB, here it comes again. The, when the MOTB, when it fully comes to pass, I'm going to say this, to show you that that this this guy, when, it, when the MOTB comes to pass, individuals like Nate and others, they're not going to take it unless they're forced to take it. But they're not, they're not, unless their back is to the wall. Because I'm really, I'm willing to starve to death. I'm willing to get my head chopped off than to take that chip. They said, we're going to, we're going to get a guillotine. We're going to chop your damn head off. I said, go, go at it, go at it, go at it, chop my damn head off. And after you chop my damn head off, you can kiss my ass. Like Cicero said in uh, Mandingo. He said, after you hang me, kiss my ass. There was a medium I was afraid of Cis, uh, Cicero. And Cicero means to cut. You remember the movie, the man Dingo. I'm going to go to another, another little piece of info, which really told you about the same thing. Um, and we covered it. Yeah, we can skip this one. I have another article here. <clears throat> so you can clearly see when Jake started going to them other books to try to, you know, Back up their claims and get their doctor. What does Ecclesiastes in the Bible say? Twelve. Making, making of. Uh, matter of fact, let me go to that, so I can read it. Cause I want to read a verse or two above that. And that was Solomon speaking. Like I said, I'm just seeing. I don't know how long I'm gonna go with this. 
Ecle Ecle twelve. All right, 11 verse, the words of the wise are as gold, and as a gold, or it's like a, it's a hook that keeps up men, or uh, as, and as nails fastened by the masters of assembly, which are given from one shepherd, and further by these, I'm sorry, let me come up here. And moreover, because the preacher, which is Solomon, which means prophet, was wise, he will he will teach. He he still taught the people knowledge. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Proverbs are hidden uh, sentences, right? You know, the proverb says one thing, but it means it means something else. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. So you got to know what are the words of truth as compared to what are not the words of truth. Like the the Gospel of Nicodemus is not of the word the words of truth. The words of the wise are as as golds and as nails fastened by the masters of assembly which are given from one shepherd and further by these my son be admonished of making many books there is no end and much study is awareness of the flesh your eyes are gonna go bad you know that's a lot of energy when you're sitting down reading books and that's what a lot of jakes do they want to get y'all don't even know the scriptures and you want to get these, what's this new book? Like if like a Bishop Nathaniel brought out a new book, you guys eat it up like candy. So let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear the Most High and keep the commandments for this is the, the duty of man. For the Most High shall bring bring every work into judgment uh, with uh, with every secret thing, whether it, whether it be good or whether it be evil. He said, vanity of vanity, saith the preacher or the prophet, all is vanity. Anything outside is truth is vanity. It's vain. This is why you're supposed to be submersed in this book. You're supposed to be obsessed by this book, by this knowledge. You guys that you, you might put up a video once every six months. You really, you, you, you're not a man of the Lord. You know? But uh, anyway, I said I wasn't going to be long with this one. It was getting my mind cleared. You know, like I said, this 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 hell thing, man, is, is terrible. You got these this idiot from a uh, friend of Yahawashai that uh broke off from uh, gms boston he's now teaching the hell doctrine and he's a real demon yeah how about shimmy i got something special for you and if he gets rid of you the rest of those guys that are blindly following you they're gonna they're gonna go their ways they're gonna go their separate ways and it's always like that it's always one guy it's not a group when a group of group of guys leave guaranteed there's one guy that got to the ears of these this the group the, the group that they that followed them and once that guy goes they go their separate ways because they they're followers all right and he was set up to lead you into wickedness so anyway with that i'm gonna say shalom one more to the next one shalom